So using the wheel as a tool means that you can get away with not learning all of the wheel techniques. So for example, centering is uh, hard. It's hard to learn how to center the clay. Excuse me. It's hard to learn how to center the clay. It's hard to learn how to pull up the walls. And those skills take a lot of practice. And so you can absolutely learn, learn them. Um, you know, my, my functional pottery class uh, learns how to throw bowls in and they're throwing within a day or two. Um, but it, there's some trial and error, there's some learning. Some of the techniques I wanna show you for using the wheel as a tool, but not as I'm only gonna make functional work, allow you to skip ahead essentially, or not quite get as sophisticated or as um, comfortable, I guess, with the, with the tool because you're gonna skip some of the processes. So what I'm going to start with is throwing a uh, flat slab and then I'm gonna also show you how to, uh, a flat slab that you could use for essentially slab building, but you're gonna have some, some texture to it. You could also use this for the base of something that gets thrown separately so you don't have to figure out how to make the floor. I'm also going to show you how to throw uh, some parts and pieces, but I'll separate those into separate videos so you can uh, you can kind of pick and choose what you want. But first I want to show you, uh, as I'm getting my wheel set up, I have a bat. Um, I'm working at home today, and so this is a wooden or a, I don't know, yeah, wood, wood bat of some sort. Um, at YVC, we have plastic bats and we have uh, bats with like a coating on top. But any kind of bat you have, you're gonna use with bat pins. So um, these little guys, these little bat pins, sometimes you put a wing nut on the bottom, they go into the holes in your wheel um, that are hard to see right now on the video. So there's a hole in the wheel. If, if it hasn't been used, in, if you've been using it without the bat pins in, you might have to get a needle tool in there and get the, the bits of clay out. Um, and, that, and then put them on there. Never throw with the bat pins on, you're gonna hurt your hand because they're gonna knock into you. So make sure you, you have a bat on the bat pins. Never throw with the wheel with no bat but bat pins in. You can also put a wing nut on the bottom of the bat pin uh, so they don't come up a little bit. I'm gonna throw without them because it's fine. Uh, <laughs> I'll just watch that they don't hit my hand. Um, this kind of bat, which is the other kind of bat, the laminate covered bat we have at school, has holes only in the bottom, not in the top, which is nice if you want to put a slab on the top, but it means you have to work a little harder. On this bat that I already put down, the holes go all the way through, just like our plastic bats, so I can look at it and find it, um, you know, find the holes pretty easily. These ones I have to kind of check with my fingers and then make sure I'm lined up to get it on there. Um, one other thing with the bats we have at school, you don't put any moisture down. I'm going to put some moisture down on my bat because, um, because it, the wooden bats just need the moisture. The other, the plastic or laminate do not. And I've got some wedged up balls of clay or actually cylinders of clay here. So I'm going to put those onto here and then I think I might need to switch. All right, I've adjusted my camera angle so you can see. I've got my bat a little bit wet. I'm going to press my clay down in the middle, make sure it's fairly centered, and then I'm going to make sure I have plenty of water on my hands, and I'm basically going to do a little bit of centering, but I'm going to be kind of incomplete on this. So I'm going to use the palms of my hands to push down, um, make sure that I push down, kind of down and in before I get, uh, before I start pulling up or before I get any water underneath. Uh, I don't want this hydroplaning. Now you can see I'm not centered. See this wobble that we have happening here? Now, uh, one approach is to, to fix that, right? To get it centered. Um, another approach, if you're not, if you're sort of zooming ahead and using the wheel as a tool before getting the basics down, is you don't get that totally figured out. So I'm gonna kind of just flatten this, leaving that bump in there. I just won't use that part of the clay. And then I can use the palm of my hand to press down, or another approach I could take is I could take a rolling pin. This is a PVC uh, pipe. We might have some at school, but we also have regular rolling pins at school. I'm gonna make sure it's wet so it's not sticking, and I always need to add extra water. And then I'm basically going to use this to compress that clay down, and I can keep myself steadier if I don't talk, uh, but <laughs> I'm explaining as I go. 
Um, so I'm going to make sure it stays wet and then I'm going to try to keep myself steady. It's a great idea if you can get your arms braced against your body or your legs um, or, or even the side of the splash pan if they reach. Mine, mine aren't going to reach at this angle. I want to just get it flat and even because all I'm trying to do is make a slab and this is just kind of a zoom ahead, you know, a quick version of a slab. Now it may not be as uh, perfectly nice. It's certainly not as even on the outside as it would be if I were doing this the right way. Um, but you saw how quick it was. Quicker even if I stopped talking. All right, so I'm gonna check the height of this. And if I've kept myself steady, it should be the same height all the way around. I can check that with a needle tool either over here by pressing my needle, putting my needle tool to the wheel head putting my fingertip to the top of the clay, and then that thickness, what can I put it in front of? There we go. That thickness is about a quarter of an inch, which is a nice slab height for me. I can double check and make sure that it's the same height over here by putting the needle tool through the clay. Um, but then, so, so the advantage of that is a real quick way to go about doing this. I could pull up the edge and make a, uh, a lip on this. I also could simply use this as a slab. I'm going to add a little throwing line into it. And now this slab that I have to work with, when I take it off the, off the bat later on, is going to be just kind of a, a interesting texture. So instead of rolling a slab on the rolling pin, on, on the slab roller or with a rolling pin at the table, I can get concentric circles or a swirl. This is essentially a swirl that looks like concentric circles that I can use as my decoration. So I can, uh, a couple of options here. It's a great idea to wire this through um, because if I don't wire this through right away um, and I let it dry too much, it's gonna crack on me. I could wait a little bit, but may, I wouldn't recommend waiting a full day. Um, my wire tool is borderline too short, so I'm gonna grab a different one. Actually, I'm gonna grab this uh, textured one. Uh, so straight, uh, regular wire tool or a textured one. I'm going to pull it tight. I'm going to get a little bit of water on the edge there. And I'm going to press down while also spinning. Okay, I'm being silly. I got the textured tool and then I decided to do the spin approach. So I've gotten rid of the texture. But um, <laughs> if you pull it straight through with the texture or if you spin it around with a regular straight wire tool. Now, I'm not going to pick this up right now. It's far too wet. Um, so I don't want to go pulling up on this slab now, um, but I can take the whole bat off and let this set up for a while. Now, eventually, um, and because it's pretty wet, it's not going to slide right off. Eventually, I could cut this slab into section and create a cylinder, or I could cut squares out of it and make a box, or I could you know, I'll cut a variety of different shapes. But this is basically just a decorated slab that I've thrown um, on the wheel and I could make a bunch of them and build with those guys.